All right, this is Jeff Hawkins, um, who founded Palm Handspring and also um, with Sandy Blakesley wrote a nice book called On Intelligence. On Intelligence, which I was just lost mine for a moment. And I also founded the Redwood Neuroscience Institute, which is now part of UC Berkeley. Yeah. And um, quick thought. Quick thought. Quick thought. Uh, I'm going to be distinguished because I'll be the quickest speaker here uh, today. I just wanted to, sh to show how it could be done. That was all. Uh, okay. <laughs> so I, I thought it would take five minutes. I might take a little bit more, a little bit less, because I had an actual different quick thought this morning. So I'm going to actually tell you something different than I thought I was going to tell you. I'm going to tell you about entrepreneurs, very briefly. Um, I've started four companies in uh, you know, a nonprofit. I live in Silicon Valley. I've been doing it for 25 years. A couple of my companies have gone pro uh, public, so I know the, 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 that venue. And um, there's a misconception about entrepreneurs. The misconception is that they're people who have good ideas. They're not. They're people who know how to make change. VCs understand this, venture capitalists. They have entrepreneurs and residents, people who are paid to do nothing. They go to very nice offices, get their meals made for them. Those are not people who have ideas. Those are people who know how to make change. They're people who have exhibited in their past the ability to make institutional change, motivate people, compete with larger competitors. And then they just wait for the idea to come along. Most people think that entrepreneurs are people who have good ideas. And I get people coming to me all the time. I've got a great idea. And I look at it, yes, it's a great idea. And I look at them and I say, you know, I don't think you can make change. I don't think you know how to lead people. I don't think you know how to compete against companies like Microsoft and Google, which is where the talent comes from. Now I'm going to say something critical to this meeting. We're all here, and I think everyone in this room has good ideas. We all want to get to someplace else, something called Enlightenment 2.0. And it takes really difficult and rare talents to overcome big competitors. It's not about getting to say, that, I've got a great idea. Yes, you've got a great idea. That's not what it takes. I was hoping this meeting would be more along the lines of, how are we going to get there? What are the techniques we're going to use? How do you go up against Goliath? We are a little community. And we have some really big competitors. And we can get together and have some rallies and have some, you know, and I love the new atheists. I love all you guys' stuff and the works and stuff. But, you know, confronting it head on, the worst thing you can do is an entrepreneur saying, we are going to kill Microsoft. You raise yourself, you put yourself a name on you, and then they come over and they put their finger on you and they kill you. <laughs> right? You know, I'm agreeing with, with Sam. We can't call ourselves atheists. That's like putting a big target on your center, right? We can't say, we don't like religion. I was thinking of an analogy, the change we want to make. My neighbors are religious. I need to get along with my neighbors. I mean, my neighbor, right next door to my house, I'm talking literally, my neighbor. Now, I can go into my neighbor's house and say, you know, I'm an atheist. That's a bad idea. It ends the conversation right there. The, the, you know, the, the fence gets raised a little bit. I go to them and say, everything, you know, you're a religious person. You're wrong. That doesn't work either. You got to go over there. And I can't say, you know, oh, it's OK. You know, you believe a bunch of bullshit. You know, that's all right. I don't do that. What I try to do is I say, oh, OK, you're a such and such. I won't name any particular religion. And then, and then I try to somehow work into the conversation like, well, do you actually believe that particular party religion? And I can confront them. They say, do you think that's really true? And we can talk about that, and there's a conversation there. So for those of you who are advocating conversations, I agree with it. But I think we also have to think about ways of, of making institutional change. I have my own particular method I'm, I'm working on, which is very, very different than probably anyone else that you're doing. And I'll just plant that seed in your mind. I'll end with my conversation there. I, in, this, in addition to designing little computers and things like that, um, I'm very interested in neuroscience. I work on neocortical theory. We think we figured out some of the basic principles by which brains store knowledge about the world. I'm convinced that I'm certain of it. We understand the basic principles about how, how the neocortex forms a model of the world and how you form beliefs. I'm turning this into a technology. I'm going to try to spread this technology around the world as fast and as quickly as I can. Now, that's all fine and good. You may believe me, you may think I'm wrong, but just take them for the moment, humor me, say maybe you'll do that. One of the nice things about this technology is it teaches you how brains form beliefs. It actually, I can explain it mathematically, and you can make analogies, and you can build this stuff. It actually works. So one of the things I'm hoping to do is actually create a technology of belief. 
and spread it around the world. And, when, and, when, you know, and money trumps ideology every time. You know, the reason, why, why do people no longer believe the earth is flat, but they still believe in Genesis? I'll tell you there's a very simple reason. The day you can make your living sailing a boat around the circular earth is the day you stop believing in a flat earth. Unfortunately, we don't make livings. There's nothing, the evolution hasn't risen up to the fact of a way of you know, putting bread on the table. And if it did, we wouldn't be having this debate anymore. So that's the approach I'm taking. Uh, and I would encourage all of you thinking about how do you make institutional change in the world? What are the things you do? And you don't do it by putting a, tag, a big target in your front and you know, raising the flag and running into the opposing army, which is about a million times bigger than you are. You have to sort of do systematic, systemic you know, institutional change that's sort of clever and takes long periods of time. I don't know the answer to it. I'm doing my thing. And I encourage all of you to think about it. Some of you talked about this week, so I don't want to be critical of this meeting. I think it's great. I love this meeting. Um, but you know, that's what we need to be thinking about. And I think that would be a good agenda for future conversations. Thank you.